Hey guys, so today I'm going to be going over this future base uh, drop I made and showing you guys how to make it uh, yourself so that you can make your own future base tracks. Alright, so you guys get the idea. So, the first things first, you want to set the tempo of your song. I find that Future Bass sounds really good between 150 and 170. I chose 160 for this track, but there, you have a lot of flexibility, and you don't even have to do 150 to 170. I mean, like, music is music, you can do whatever you want. Um, but the classic Future Bass sound is typically pretty, pretty quick, pretty fast BPM. So once you set your BPM to 160, you want to make sure, now this is the biggest part of producing music, this is more of a FL Studio lesson, and uh, I mean just a lesson in general rather than future bass. Make sure you assign all, everything you do, your kicks, your snares, your audio, everything to your mixer tracks, so that they each have their own individual mixer. Um, that way you can control everything's volume, everything's pan, and you can also set up side chaining, which um, I'll explain in a bit. Um, but basically for side chaining you just want to make sure if you start doing this right off the bat You don't have to worry about doing it later anytime you add a lead or a bass into the song You're gonna want to run it like route it into this only not the master There's actually an option that says route to this track only you're gonna want to select your leads your chords everything and you're gonna route to this track only and then uh, Side chain your kick like that, but that like I said, we'll cover that more in depth later the first thing you're going to do when you open your project is find some good kicks and snares and, and drum samples. I like to filter my groups. Uh, if you don't know how to do that, right click add filter group and you can add groups and rename them. I never change the default. I make the default my drums so it just says unsorted. But uh, you know, for the sake of, uh, I'll, I'll name it drums so that you guys can, oh. So you're going to select some drums that you like, you know, select some kicks. Right, and other things. I um, Once I get my drums, I typically stick with like a kick, a clap, to add some high end to the snares. A snare, uh, the main snare, and then a little snare to add some accent, but this isn't required at all in a hi-hat. And you can do whatever you want with your drums, but these are just the things that I like to do. So first, for the drop, if you're doing a world style drop, W-R-L-D, uh, he does this like kick crash combo thingy. Um, I mean, most future bass artists do this. So you're going to want to find a good crash and uh, use it as an audio sample. And the reason why I do it as an audio sample and not a MIDI like setup like this is because you can cut the audio samples like this. So you'll see it cuts out. And when you add that with the chords, it or whoops, sorry, when you add that with the chords, it just makes everything cut out instantly and gives it a very powerful sort of sound and that's why um, you know a lot of artists like world and stuff I don't know if this is what they do, but that's what it sounds like they do so that's why I did that So once you get your drum set up for the drop It's basically gonna be if you're doing like I said a world style drop You're going to do just kicks no snares. You can do that. I usually add that in like afterwards like you can see here And again this guide I'm not telling you what not to do for future bass or what to do this is I'm explaining simply what I did for this song you have so much creative flexible freedom when you're making any sort of track whether it's future bass I mean create your own genre if you want to to be honest that's the beauty of music is you can do anything you want for this song I added some simple kicks right I mean there's nothing much going on no hats no snares it's very simple and then I added a chord progression and um, I keep all of my everything like all my kicks and everything in separate patterns the reason why I do this is so they can all be as you can see I'm, I'm able to activate which ones I want if I did everything in the same pattern I would not be able to do that so I also highly recommend creating different organization patterns like different groups so that you can group your things and listen to them individually like I'm doing um, it's, it's very good for all songs not, e not even future based just for FL studio in general it's a very good thing to do so I add my chords I can't really go over like chord progression because uh, that would just take way too long um you don't even need to know music theory i don't really know music theory like at all um but i kind of just go with it like i pick a note and then i pick one that sound pick pick one that sounds good with it 
and I add a couple more. Uh, future bass is typically a four note chord, I've noticed. Again, don't limit yourself to this. Right? You'll see it's four chords rather than like a three chord, like if I do like, right? That sounds fine, but once you add this fourth note, that sounds way more future bassy. Uh, I mean, than, than just a three note chord, like versus, right? So that's why all my chords here are four note, co four note chords because it kind of just gives it that future bassy vibe, right? Right, so I try to choose four note chords like this. Again, don't limit yourself. You can do whatever you want, um, whatever sounds good, because um, you may find out something that's really, really cool. So after we get our chords, um, you want to add the kicks and the crashes like this. And that's the basic framework. I mean, that's it. You already have future bass going. From there, I can't really tell you guys what to do. If you're wondering what I'm doing for chords, I'm using Massive here. Uh, my, I highly recommend getting Massive, but I'm, I'm really just doing a square saw synth. It's just a saw and a square, right? I have some square here, some saw here. You can do it in, in any VST you have, or even any of the stock. Like, if you're using FL Studio, which I assume you are if you're watching this video, you can use something like Harmer or Harmless and just make a, a saw. I mean, it's supposed to sound like a video game. If you know how to get video game sounds, right? Like, right? So just something like that. And if you want, look up other tutorials online about like lead design and chord design in Massive and like trying to find like, you know, uh, videos that go over like sort of like even game sounds, you know, because that's basically all I'm doing for this. Now I add in a bass, which is a little difficult to hear, but. Um, and what I do for that is again, another Massive. And this, again, you just kind of got to learn sound design for this. It, it, it would be too long for me to cover, but it's uh, just a, a grain and a saw, and that's it. Um, and it's it's not, not you know, complicated at all. Um, if you look up massive, like, dubstep sound designs, I mean, I'm sure you'll get an idea of how to do what I'm doing. So I add that in to give it some depth. Um, I, I cut it, though. Um, if you are using panoramic EQ... You can go to presets and you can do a 20 hertz to an 18 hertz cut and then move slide this over and this cuts the bass so that you don't hear any of the bass um, because I don't want this to be the bass. I have a, a sub going on if you look here and then I want the bass for that. So when you add the um, when you add the sub in and that's it. You're already starting to get a big sounding drop. And if you're wondering what I did for the bass and stuff, it's just the, the root notes here, right? The root notes, C sharp, A, G sharp, A, C sharp, A, G sharp, E. I'm just using the root notes of these chords to get the, the bass sound. So you'll see G sharp, A, or C sharp, A, G sharp, A, right? So that's all I'm doing for the sub and the, the bass here. Now, um, I add in just to give it a little more like with you know like big chords I add in like these big chords here it's pretty much the same exact thing um, you'll see it sounds it sounds very gamey it just sounds slightly different you know so when you add that in it makes the sound really wide now the lead the lead is super fun to make if you guys have massive um, it's just a saw I mean like if you look it's literally just a saw it has a pitch bend, uh, so the pitch goes down, like it goes like whoop, whoop. That was horrible, but... But you can see the pitch kind of bends there. Um, I could cover that in a later tutorial, but it'll take a while for me to go over how I made that sound. But I used this really cool thing called Fruity Convolver. And um, it creates reverb, and I turn the dry all the way down, so you're basically hearing what it would sound like, like... If it was in a room but you were hearing only the reverb of that room. It's really weird, but it gives it like a really interesting sound, you know? And then I, I you know, kind of messed with the sound a bit and cut the lows. And for the lead design, this, I mean, you just make melodies. I mean, make, make whatever sounds good to you. Right, just something that sounds cool. And I try to, to give it that future bass sound, I try to keep no, none of the lead during the chords because I want it to be like, they're, they're two separate things. You know, you hear the boom from the chord and then it cuts to like this lead. And then you hear the boom from the chord again and then it cuts to a lead again. You know, it, it's supposed to be like a back and forth, almost like a swaying motion, you know? Yeah. 
and you'll see we already pretty much have the entire drop going here. Now, to add more flavor, I add in a chip tune here. Um, again, chip tunes. I can't really explain how to make chip tunes, but they're super. It's just an arpeggiated chord. So you find like chords you like, and you arpeggiate them, and um, really quickly. I mean, most most chip tunes are very fast. So this is a, a very quick chip tune, and the chip tune is going during the lead, right? And so again, that adds a little more flavor in between the chords. And that's it. We've made the whole drop, and hopefully that was easy for you guys. Um, I, I do a little transition thing here, which again is simple. It's just a square or a square pluck. I mean, it, it literally it's just. Or, whoops, that's the wrong sound. It, it's just a pluck. It's a it's in between a square and a saw, and all it is is plucking. So you'll see that's what we hear in the transition. And then to get this drop, it's, I mean, we're, all we're adding is more drums. There's no more, like, there's nothing else that, that makes it more complicated. You're literally. And that's all I'm doing. Oh, and some hats. But that's it. That's all we're adding. And we get our drop. Now, like I said earlier, I did sidechain. So I sidechained the kick and the snare. Right, and to do that, right click, route to, or side chain to this track, uh, and you want this track to be separate. Don't don't have any sounds bound to this track. This is its own individual track, right? It's a bus. It's carrying these sounds, right? So this bus is going to carry them to the master, right? So you'll see all my like my lead, my chord, my ba or my bass. I don't also I don't do the sub to the bus. Uh, I would not recommend subbing to the bus because. When you sidechain, the sub will duck, and that just sounds really weird. Like, I have everything else duck, but I don't have the sub ducked. And if you guys don't know what sidechaining is, sorry, I didn't even realize. Sidechaining is just the thing that makes the volume duck whenever, like, a kick or a snare hits to give it that really, like, sort of, like, oof, you know? So what I do is I assign all these. I route to this track only and make sure that this is routed to the master. So basically what's happening is all the volume from these is getting sent to this and then it's all getting put together in this one and then being sent to the master. Now since they're all being sent to this one, you can put on a fruity limiter, right? I put on a limiter. You're going to go to the on the limit, turn everything down so that if your volume is really loud, it doesn't you don't want this to actually limit. Don't let this limit because that'll make your mix sound kind of weird. You're basically like losing control over your mix. So don't let this limit, but turn all this down, then go to the composition. And for the side chain, right click it and select your kick, right? If you want to side chain the kick. And all you have to do is bring down the threshold and the knee, right? So you'll see, if I bring down the threshold all the way, it sounds like a little bit, well, not even a little bit, it's way too much side chain. Like, it totally cuts out all the volume. But that's just to show you what it does, right? So find one that... Right, and just to give you an idea of how it sounds without the side chaining, if I turn off the limiters... Right, see, that sounds... It sounds so bad without, like, you, ha I mean, again, don't limit yourself, but you have to sidechain in a future bass track or else it just does not, it doesn't have the same effect, right? It doesn't sound nearly as clean, but once we add the sidechaining, right, it makes it sound so much more powerful, right? And that's what you want is powerful for the future bass tracks. You want them to hit hard. And that about covers it. I think that goes over everything that I've done in this future bass track, and hopefully you can create one similar using what I've taught you guys here. Um, uh, you can see that this is very simple. I didn't even do any automations. This whole song has no automations, right? Um, which means that this is extremely simple to get something that sounds like... You know, something that you'd hear like World or Grant Bowtie. I mean, I'm not trying to compare myself to World and Grant Bowtie because they're fucking amazing and I'm not nearly as good as a future bass producer as Grant Bowtie and World, but you can start heading in that direction by, by doing something like this. Um, I mean, again, don't copy this directly because, like, 
you know, be creative. Come up with your own chords. Come up with your own lead. You know, don't don't copy this uh, track one to one. I'm not going to offer a project file um, simply because I don't want people to copy this one for one because it kind of ruins the whole point. You're not producing, and you're not being creative if you're just downloading projects and tweaking them a little bit. You know, come up with your own stuff, like your own chords, and 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 you know, get that creativity from in you. And um, that pretty much covers everything. Um, I hope this was helpful to you guys. Um, hopefully, you can learn a lot from making this, and you can add your, um, you can add automations. You can do your own uh, effects. Um, there are no effects in this besides the crash. I guess if you want to consider that an effect, there are no effects. So definitely, when you make your own, add in some effects. This was just a very quick, simple sort of tutorial. So yeah, hopefully, it was helpful for you guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. And if it helped you at all, go ahead and leave a like down below. Let's try to get, I don't know, 500 likes. If you guys have any suggestions for future videos, go ahead and leave a comment below. And also, if you just wanted to leave some feedback, it seriously means a lot to me. I mean, the only reason I make these videos is because I love looking at your guys' comments. So go ahead and leave a comment below. Finally, if you like watching content like this, go ahead and subscribe because I'm going to be putting out way more stuff like this and also guitar covers, reviews, things like that. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in another video.